drug to the talk me. Colin has right. done demonstrations with us before in the case of the West, and they are always fascinating, and the end results are delicious. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Namaste. Welcome to my Capri show, and welcome to the trade show. As uh, it's introduced, I'm from the Levani restaurant in Torquay, well, Sweden. I've been mean, there for three years, trying to uh, look up some proper Indian food using local ingredients, and perhaps we won the taste of the restaurant more twice in a row, promoting local produce. Uh, I would call my menu as an indo devon menu, where we promote punishments and ripples of unshine, scallops, Parts of the way, etc. Plus all the usual traditional uh, Indian dishes which you find in an Indian restaurant in the UK. Well, today I've decided to spice up things. I think it's time to spice, spice it up. I've decided to make a curry with local Brixton monkfish. How many of you know monkfish? It's one of the popular fish from Brixton, one of the famous fish markets. In the UK, and uh, it's one of the top moving dishes in my restaurant under the fish category. And to make that dish, I will be using the usual, easily available Indian spices. I don't want to make it too complicated, make a big list of spices. Nice and easy, simple to cook, fresh fish, anybody can do You don't need to be a chef or to own a restaurant to do it. Uh, today, I'm introducing my pickles, homemade pickles, handmade at the restaurant kitchen, and also some of the masalas which I've been using today. So that brings us to the dish. The name of the dish I'm going to cook today is, of course, monkfish, and it is called the Madras Chetinadu. I'm sure you've heard about Madras. Madras is uh, the capital of one of the Indian states, Tamil Nadu, where Chetinadu comes from. Chetinadu cuisine is, I would say, the great grandfather of Madras. And to be honest, in India, there is no dish called Madras. It's a place. Generally speaking, people in Madras eat spicy dishes. So, Madras has to be nice and spicy. My Chitinado Madras powder consists of 13 ingredients, uh, which are used to make the proportion. And so we'll be using that to make this dish. So are you ready to spice up things? Excellent. So first I've got a nice pan. Uh, we need to get this nice and hot. I'll be using vegetable oil to cook this dish. In India, we sometimes in my place, Goa, where I come from, or in Kerala, where my wife comes from, we sometimes use coconut oil, which gives a very unique flavor to the dish. But today, since a lot of you are not familiar with coconut oil, let's go for vegetable oil. So I will be adding four tablespoons of the vegetable oil. And the next step is just have a wait to make sure the oil is nice and hot, roughly around 85 degrees. Because the next ingredient I'm going to add has to splutter. Can you guess what it will be? Oil is hot, you add something and it splutters. It's mustard seed. There are two different kinds of mustard seeds. It's one of the allergens, so please, if you have any food allergy, intolerance, it's a warning. There is yellow mustard seeds. So I'll be using yellow mustard seeds today because that gives a unique flavor to this dish from Chetinado. If, if this dish didn't come from Chetinado, I'd use black mustard seed. So that makes all the difference. Which area of India does this dish come from? And Chetanadu is a village in India. For some reason, the Chetanadus have become so popular, and which has uh, given rise to Madras. <laughs> so, well, it's worth making a note of the spoon sizes because I can cook without a spoon, but then to make it easier for spectators to observe, I can always use uh, a spoon. So I think that oil is nice and hot, but just want to make sure. Uh, I don't know if there is a thermometer to check it, but so I will add a few mustard to see if it splutters. Yeah, it is slowly it's sinking down and splutters. I don't want it to sink down, I want it to splutter straight away. Sorry, folks, am I being clear? Because I can't, I can get the echo coming through. Right, so I'd like to make sure that you're not going to take your mouth. 
Right, they got oil nice and hot. So I'll be adding one tablespoon. It's 15 grams, I'd say. One tablespoon of yellow mustard powder. As you can see, my chef's mark is yellow today. The last couple of show I did was red. The one before that was black. So that yellow is the flavor of the week. So you've got yellow mustard seeds. So does that mean yellow is hot? Well, yellow is hotter than the black. Yes. That's a very good question because Chetinadu is an uh, area where they eat spicy dishes. So that's nice and ready. Can you hear this clustering? Gonna stay away. What my mom does is she takes another pan and covers it up. But I want you to see, I want to get some effect. So we've got some nice mustard spluttering all over the place. So we've got some mustard there. So I leave it on the side where it is splutter. I'll quickly get some onions, which is probably one of the next things we need. So we need to find this fine, as fine as you can. Chop some onions using a nice sharp knife for a nice fine chopping. So we got one large or rather medium sized onions. It's not very fine because I'm a bit nervous at the moment. I don't want to cut my finger. I've never stopped onions uh, like, you know, when everybody's watching me. It is a sharp edge now, yes. So I've got this ready here. So I put it back in the flame. I've got some garlic. Do you mind So I'm get some garlic ready. So I'll be cooking 
750 grams of monkfish today. So let's let's share it. Yeah, there will be enough for tasting, yes. You see the garlic is nice and round. Now, now patience, patience. You need uh, a chance you can give me something to cover so we can speed up the, you know, in the process. We need to get it tender and again, the light brown. We don't want to call it brown because that gives a very smoky flavor to it. Get 
the snow coming through. And we got this medium chili powder, half a tablespoon. Rather the flame is off, it's off the flame. And you got this uh, Kashmiri chili, nice and red. Do you see it? Nice and red, yes. Half of this. And then you got turmeric, antiseptic, medicinal values, anti aging, anti wrinkling, anti air shedding. But in these spices, ingredients have medicinal values. Of course, everybody knows that. So, turmeric powder. Warmer blending. I prefer to do like that. Well, if I imitate my wife, she does like that. Much it's more up gentle. to you. Much more yes, much more, yes. Well, she says respect the ingredients. Right, so we've got to make basic powders. And now, what I'm going to add now is going to be the turning point. Because that is the Chetinadu Madras, which is going to be the the, the, the signature to this particular dish because it comes from the Chetinad region. If you notice, I've added the basic curry powders coriander, chili, turmeric. These are the basic curry powders, except the garam masala, which is the fish powder. So, we will add one tablespoon. One tablespoon of my homemade. Can you read it? Chetinadu, Madras. I would, uh, because the fish is 750 grams, I would prefer it flat, not mountain. Right, so roast the Chetinadu masala a little bit. Get the smell coming through. You need to activate the spice because that's been there for almost a week. So the heat activates the flavors. And that's what oil, onion, and garlic and mustard does. So the flavors are dormant. How long do you think that spice will last for? This one here? Yes. How long do you think this one? Six months. This one, maybe two weeks, three weeks, depending on what season of restaurant I'm in. The summer that goes quickly. It's one of the uh, most popular spicy fish uh, curries we do in the restaurant. Chetinadu. Anybody who likes Madras, Jalfrezi, likes this. Okay, so you can see the masala is nice and ready. And now it's time to add tomatoes. Can you switch tomatoes? I'm using 450 grams of chopped tomatoes. When you eat tomatoes, it's the body of the color, the consistency, the flavor, the color. Do you think I should add this? Tomatoes, you're ready for it. I cannot cook something in curry, 
especially the technology now, the currently very hard to get precious. So it was nice fresh currently. Well, it was fresh, I'm sorry, it's taking its toll. Where did you get this one from? Well, I buy it from, to be honest, I buy it from online. There are a few online shops you can buy, or the continental shop in uh, Mexico. Yeah, but back home, you've got a farm at the back of the kitchen. The mom runs, picks a few leaves and puts it in. But here you've got a refrigerator to keep it and, you know, it's extremely difficult getting the right ingredient. Because a lot of the Indian restaurants don't use a lot of ingredients. And because of this, a lot of the suppliers don't supply them, don't keep them. Can I have some curry leaves? I'm sorry, nobody's asking for it. It's just you and we can't get curry leaves just for you. Can I get some tamarind? Sorry, nobody's asked for tamarind. So I have to get online. It's a good thing you can get anything and everything online these days. It's a blessing. Right, so we've got it nice and thick. Can you get a smell? Because you've got all the salads in there. So for this 750 grams, I'll be using three sprigs. Well, that's a very good question. Can you eat curry leaf? What do you think? The answer is yes or no. If you can't eat, I wouldn't be putting in this. Well, number two, you can't. You're not supposed to. There's a saying which says, don't treat me like a curry leaf. It's use and throw. Well, I've been treated like a curry leaf in my life. Let's do, let's do some uh, introspection. So the curry leaf, like a baby. Yeah, it's similar, but it's different flavor. North Indian curries use bay leaf and coriander. South Indian curries leaf use curry leaf. That's drastic difference between North Indian and South Indian food. My restaurant features North Indian, South Indian, but my favorite is South Indian because I'm from South India. There's one ingredient which uh, I apologize, I should have poured some water into it. It's called tamarind. Get some water Just to cover it. This is the other unique ingredient which makes the chitinali unique from the other curries. It has an ingredient called the tamarind. Again, this is a special variety of tamarind called kukum tamarind. The normal tamarind, everybody knows, is this one, the paste. Alright? That's tamarind too. But this curry uses kukum tamarind, which is a perennial plant. That's a kukum tamarind, which is supposed to soak in water and then add to the curry. To generate the flavors, so because it's smoked and dried. So the flavors are intact. So you put in water, the flavors will come out. So soft, yes. Because this one, as you can see, is not dry, the normal tamarind. It's paste already. You don't have to soak it in water. So, today's story, I'm using kukum tamarind water. Any questions, please? At all. So as you can see, the masala is nice and ready and thick. Can you see? Folks, the shmir chili gives the color, the medium chili gives the punch, and the rest gives the flavor. Tomato gives the body, onion gives the body, and the main ingredient is bricks and fish, which we need to have later on. And the curry leaf gives the aromatic flavor. Let's add a bit more flavor, nothing wrong, just one more spray. Many places don't do fish curries. It's 
perhaps why I'm doing fish for I mean, you can do this fish in many meat dishes. But in India, if you're cooking with meat, I recommend garam masala and ginger to it, means we don't add to the fish bones. You so just add ginger to fish? Well, for this fish curry, I don't, not for the chicken and some fish curries you add ginger alone, no garlic. Some fish curry ginger and garlic. Again, it depends from village to village, mom to mom, chef to chef. Well, this chitinado comes from Chitinado region, and this particular curry they don't add ginger. Making all this for the chef. Well, uh, but one of the pickles I'm doing is the Naga pickle, which features the Naga pitch, the hottest chili from India. You tested it. Yes. Well, later on. So the chilies have to take the gloves off, right? Exactly. But if you handle them in the gloves, you thought you were going to be in trouble. It happened to me once. I sourced my chilies, Naga chilies from Devon Chili Man, based in Nipnara, and he offered me some chilies when he came to dine at my restaurant. I still can't forget that it's good. I was thinking I'm a chef, I know chilies. I just chopped up without gloves. It was all fine. I went to the school to pick up my kids around 3 o'clock and it was burning. My fingers were burning. And that day, to make things worse, I manicured my nails. It's a mess. So I had to get some oil, bring him up, what can I do? It's your chili, you're responsible, I'm going to sue you. That's the German chili man there. <laughs> Yeah, but he gave me some ideas. Oil, ice. Yeah, but then after that I'm very careful with it. Right. Okay, so we need to add, you can see the tamarind. It has actually made the water colourful. I don't know how to put it. Like this. So the water is colourful. That's the visual thing I see. So we add this water to this one. That's chef. Okay, fine. This hasn't been water for long enough. So I'm going to add some of the naga, uh, sorry, some of the tamarind. Sitting here with naga experience, sorry. Yes, that's the, that's our... That's right, yes, yeah. Because you want the tamarind better. This curry is, if it curry is Overnight, it still tastes better because all the flavors will ooze into the curry. Just add some more water. I don't want too much of tamarind. But there's proportion for everything. If you go onto lavani.co.uk, you can see the recipes and you can buy my pickles and the powders. It's all available. Not yet time to add salt. Why do you wait to add the salt? I add salt before adding the fish. Some chefs add it after adding the fish. For me, after adding the fish, you want to handle it minimum because fish is a very tender meat. You want to add salt to mix it up. So I prefer to add salt before adding the fish. But that's what my mom does. She brings the curry, everything ready, adds the salt, checks for salt, I'm going to add a bit more of salt because the fish is going to get some salt, so get it right. So you add the correct amount of salt. Well, my recipe says how much salt, how much fish. Some recipe says two tastes. If you get your salt wrong, the whole thing is wrong. So, you can see that boiling now. What? There's one thing we need to add is green chilies. Well, I just tasted it, he just melted, and it's already hot. Do you want to have some more green chilies? Are we going for really hot? That's never chili, man. Let's see who wins. Well, at least for color's sake, let's add a bit of green to it. So, one nice green chili. Got my real sharp knife somewhere. That's my favorite. So probably we add three green chilies. This one. Slit it. Oh no, 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 the pot is the seed the most important. No, no, you don't. 
That's right. Yeah. So I've got one, two. I don't think we need more than that. I think two is plenty. Yes, it's important. You have a curry in India, nice and warm, 30 degrees. You sweat. You've got a handkerchief always in your pocket. You sweat and you burn. That's when your meal is complete. And the meal is never complete without a pickle, folks. Digestive. Ginger pickle, garlic pickle, axe is digestive. Pork pickle, beef pickle, brixum, shark pickle. Did you say shark? You name it. Well, I have to say it's small eye, precious shark for the record. It's not the shark fins. Go to jail for that. Small eye, precious shark from Brixham. Shark pickle, monkfish pickle, bricks and monkfish pickle. Uh, I've got nine pickles. Let's do the Mediterranean first. Ginger pickle, garlic pickle, nara chili pickle. And we've got the non-vegetarian pickles, which are very unique. Beef pickle, pork pickle, monkfish pickle, shark pickle, tuna pickle, and beef pickle. So did I repeat beef? So which one is missing? Prawns pickle. Look at the prawns pickle. Prawns all there on display. You can start buying them from next week from the website. All the information is on these banners here. Sorry. You can buy them. And you can taste them over there. Pickles are available for tasting right there. Taste the West store. Yes, taste the West store. Now it's time, I can get the flavor and the aroma of uh, the tamarind coming through. So we need to add salt and a bit more of water, just plain water. So can you smell what I'm cooking now? Do you get the flavors coming through? Is it nice? It's smelling fantastic, but I'm moving away just a little bit. It's right, very, right. very strong. Yeah, we haven't had the fish, we haven't had water. When you add the fish, it's going to be um, subtle. It's not about heat, it's not about chili. It's about the subtle flavors created by the combination, or we call it the amalgamation of spices and the fish. Right, so we need some water. I'll keep it aside. Thank you. Can you need to allow enough water for the fish to cook. Yeah, it's a 
much stuff, yeah. I wouldn't do this for its song. You can, but it's, it's flaky, so I prefer monkfish. But then there is no hard fast rules. You can use swordfish, monkfish, sea bass, sea green. Make this curry. At the Dartmouth Food Fair, I did a different variation of this curry in bricks and sea bass. Well, it's 750 grams. I have to trust my wife in this because she did the ingredients for me today. Well, I don't mind a few extra pieces, but it's less, that's not too strong. Because I've added the masala for 750 grams. Yeah, the proportions are very important. It depends on how much fish you're using. Otherwise, one or the other ingredient is going to overpower the taste of the meat. That's what happens with curries. Mostly, the taste of the meat is lost. That's some of the reason, one of the reasons why I do venison in my restaurant. I marinate with some red wine and the usual red currant jelly, plus some Indian spices. And then grill it separately. Don't cook it in the curry. And then top it off with the sauce. So you get the flavor of the meat as well as the flavor of the sauce. Of course, you use a rose gravy which comes out of it and the sauce, which gives the flavor of the uh, medicine. The same thing with prawns. You want to be careful with the tiny to get rubbery. Medicine, if you don't cook it right, it's best hard pink. If you don't cook it right, it's leather. It's very chewy. Because it's such a lean meat. Yes, yes, and it has a strong gamey flavor. Very low in fat. You get all the enjoyment of red meat without the danger of cholesterol, calories. Right, so the most important ingredient which I'm going to add is salt. Salt there. I'm going to be adding probably a flat spoon of teaspoon of salt. We'll be careful with salt. Exactly, yes. There's nothing much you can do. The salt is up. Well, there are a few things which you can do, but you know, that's a bad luck. If you've got a big party of 50 people and your chef puts an extra salt on his day, you can't chuck out the 50 kilos of curry. So you, you can bring the salt down by adding some potatoes and take the potatoes out. So, potatoes and salt, yeah. Yeah, it's all sort of yeah. But not like it's going to make a toy thing. Potato is a starch and they're getting aged. Exactly, yeah. In case you go wrong, there are ways to it, but just back up. Right, that's nice and boiling, as you can see. Almost ready. 
we need to now cook and cook and cook till the meat is, I mean the fish is tender. Some more water. I, to be honest, I prefer slow cooking to high heat, short time. I prefer low heat, long time. The flavors are entirely different. It's because of the chemical reaction that takes place. There's something missing in here is the flavor of the fish. Relish. That explains it all. It's a relish. So it's utterly versatile. 
Well, I can tell you a small story about pickles. When I was in school, and my mom and my dad decided, he took up a job with Gulf Air and he wanted to go abroad. And he decided that he's going to put his children in boarding school. Have you heard about the Cheswick boarding school? Run by the nuns and freaks. So I said to my mom, you're not going to be there to cook for me. So, but also food is not very good for you compared to your home food. I leave it open just to get the paper So what my mom does is she made all these bottles of pickles, puts them in a bag and I take you to the hostel. So when your mom is not there to cook for you, the next best thing your mom's cooking is pickle. So you get a taste of your home. So it's not your home sickness. Exactly, yes, it does. And then you can, you know, you diminish the taste of the hostel food. You get a home food. Later on, once you're traveling to the UK or the US when I visit my brother, I have a shoe, especially in Australia, you don't want to take all these pickles because you know what the custom is like. The mom says, no, you've got to take it. I said, no, it's going to leave because I've got my new shirt in there because we don't have this real tight packing back in my place. It's all, what do you call those tapes and stuff. By the time you reach the UK, it's all, it's all oily. It's all oily. So you are torn between, you want the mom's pickle or you want to keep your new, new shirt safe. Yeah, that's the pickle. That's, that's I'm sure you went to the pickle, Tony. Sorry? I'm sure you went to the pickle. So I went to the pickle, pickle, yes. And again, as I mentioned, my dad took a job in Abu Dhabi in a, in, in a company called Gulf Air. So my mom visited him every six months. And they get a free ticket to travel around the world from the company. So we went to different places because we're the staff of Gulf Air. We don't pay nothing for it. Once a year, you can travel any, any, to any country Gulf Air flies to. So we go, and my mom goes to Dubai to be with my dad, and we are in boarding school or at home with my grandmother. So my mom writes down the recipes. You're not here. I, I grew up and now I'm ready to cook. I says, like, I want to cook something, like the beef curry you make. Let's sit down and write it down. Because my mom doesn't know how many teaspoons and how many grams and how many kilograms. And she doesn't know the metrics. So I have to make a sit down and say how many things one, two, three, okay, I have to measure it out, get the correct, and convert it to the tablespoon, so I can cook. That's how it all started. Then I went on to do hotel management, worked in the Shelton Hotel, different hotels, cruise lines, flight pricing jobs, and then landed in the UK food scene in 2000 in Glasgow. In Glasgow, and that's where it all started. Mix it. 
a la carte. That's how we do it, a la carte. Unless it's a big uh, party, which is one of the So you're enjoying your you can come to before and the exit to college.
want it to burn straight away. You want to get this nice aftertaste, aftertaste as it goes down. It's not me you have to say, it's, a, it's you you have to say, but it gets important already, isn't it? It comes to that point, I think so. Not too spicy. Right, we're almost there, folks. Britson Monkfish Madras Technado is here. Are you ready? Japanese? 
Yeah, that's the gentleman that we actually get the tickets from. Yeah, that's the That's the